Hey, what's up? This is Hyun Seok Yoon, and welcome to another Numerous Model Builder tutorial series. In this tutorial, uh, we're gonna go over the fundamentals of modeling and make some simple population models from the scratch and go over some different uh, model components and model analysis features in the Numerous. Uh, this is gonna be a basic building blocks for all the future tutorials. So focus, and let's go ahead. So first of all, uh, let's go over the general process we models go over to build and analyze the models. The very first thing you want to do is to think about the system you're trying to understand and what they're composed of. So for example, in a population model, uh, do we want to keep track of each individuals or as a population as a whole? Uh, or do we want to classify the population into different structures such as age or sex? Uh, do we want to have different subpopulations? that create the whole or just a one single population? So these are some of the questions you want to think about. Then uh, you want to think about how the parts of the systems that we just talked about are interconnected and how they change over time. Uh, in a population model, we can think about how a population grows or declines over time. Or in a cellular network model, for instance, uh, we can think about how concentrations of different ligands trigger a cascade effect of different cell responses. So you can think about that and then once you have those abstract ideas, uh, you want to create these abstract ideas into a mathematical and pictorial representation. And this is exactly what we're doing in the numerous model builder canvas. And we bring out the ideas about the model into concrete visual representation along with some coding of equations and processes in the system. And once you do this in numerous canvas, then we go ahead and run the model on the dashboard and create a simulation. And finally, you examine the results of the simulation and come up with some insights on how your model represents the processes that happen in the real world. All right, so with that in mind, now we're gonna go ahead and make our first model on Numerous. And the first model we're gonna make is the exponential growth model. Exponential growth model is appropriate for a population that has no resource limit to its growth and the new number grows in kind of like a J curve. Um, some examples of this kind of growth can be found in bacterial growth, in a control group of a lab culture, or a, a human population growth over the centuries. And also we're gonna get some, set some assumptions here before we build a model. So uh, some of the assumptions are gonna be the number of population is gonna be positive real number instead of being integers. Uh, so it's going to be an estimate of the population and as mentioned there's no density dependence or resource limitation in the population. So of course this is pretty unrealistic assumption but as the saying goes in the modeling world all models are wrong but some are more useful than others. Uh, and I, I want you to remember this. So basically what it's saying is that all the systems we conceive of have to deviate in some way from the real world system because it is impossible to convey every little aspect of the real world situation in the model due to the limitation of our like model, modern computing power and infinity of the different variables we have to consider. So yeah, and with that in mind, let's build an exponential growth model. Um, so here we're gonna put some state variables. This is gonna be our main variable, which is the population as a whole. And we call it n, and we'll make a flow object which allows the populations to change over time. So we're going to call it dn, and we're going to create a term, and this is going to represent the growth rate of the population. So this is going to be r, and the mathematical equation that I'm going to put in the flow object is going to be r times x. So that's the classic differential equation we put in for the exponential population. Uh, so it's not going to be r times x, it's going to be r times n. So we put in here. And the initial population we want to have is 10. So that's the initial value of the n. And we can always move this around to make the visualization look better. And um, last but not least, we're going to put 0 0.1 in the value of r. So to describe each components I just um, that I just use really quick, 
uh, state is the main variable of the model, and you can think of it as a bucket of some object, which is in our case individuals in the population. And flow can be considered as a pipe that regulates the inflow and outflow of the objects in the bucket. And this is where you want to put in the difference equations or difference equations for discrete models that dictate the change in the state variable. And the cloud here, right here, uh, represent an infinite sink or infinite source of the object. And lastly, the term represent parameters in the equations. So with that in mind, now let's go ahead and set up the time setting. So this is going to be start time is going to be zero. The ending time, let's put it 20. And the time step, we're going to adjust to 0 0.1. All right. And let's just say we are ready. And we're going to go ahead and launch. And we'll go ahead and run the model. And we see that the time step has gone to 20. Um, but nothing really happens because there's nothing to show. So we have to go back and make the graph component of the table or the table component. All right, so let's make a line graph and we're going to call it graph n. And in here, we're going to add, we can add whatever we want to show in the dashboard. Well, and what we have to do is to press plus and we're going to right click on the stuff we want to add on the table here. And once that's done, we're going to press plus again and that sets it. And for method, we want to do RK4. This is the uh, methods for solving different equations. RK4, uh, it's the one get cut out 4, one get cut out 2, and then there's Euler method, uh, discrete for the discrete model. And let's launch. Launch and we now have the graph. Uh, we can go back and forth to create the table or the graph. And let's run the model. So here we see the kind of like a J curve. And if we extend the time, it's going to be, we're going to see more and more of it. So if we put it to 10,000, we can see it growing into more of J curve. All right. So now we're going to tweak a little bit and we're going to delete this. So delete anything in the canvas. We want to click on it and then press function delete. Or what else we, what, what we can do is we can also like do this and drag it and then select all of it. And then if you press function delete, it deletes everything, but we are going to bring it back now. Uh, can't really bring it back. So I'm just going to make it real quick again here. Uh, we're going to connect this. It's going to be R times N. Initial is going to be 10. And instead of putting the term, we're going to put something called slider. And what that does is we're going to be able to change the value of the parameter real time on the dashboard. So now that's connected. Uh, launch. And here we see this thing. It's the, it's the slider. And let's go back and look at this uh, components. So we can set the minimum value and the maximum value. We're going to decrease this to, say, 2. Uh, step's going to be 0 0.1. And initial value is going to be 0 0.3. So and then we, when we do launch, now it's set to initial value. We set up, and it goes from 0 to 2. And we can run the model, and then we can change the value and then run the model again. As you can see, the instances become different with different parameter values, of course. And yeah. And another thing I want to show you is the batch run. So if you want to see how the population behaves in, with different R value in a, one in a one graph, we can use something called batch run. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to erase at R and create a parameter R here in the parameter folder. Uh, we're going to have a value 0, 0.0 for now. And then add. And then adds the value parameter R. And that's immediately connected to the value here. 
So keep that in mind. We're going to launch. We're going to go to batch runs. Uh, we're going to drag this up a little bit, create a new graph. And what we can do here is go to configure, choose variables, and we have n. So click that and exit out. You're going to go to batch run. The parameter is going to be r, so that's the only thing we have in the set. And let's call, let's say we have, we want uh, six different r values going from 0 0.1 to 0 0.6. And that automatically creates different values given the interval, given the same interval. Alright, so when we exit out, we, there's going to be different ends color coded differently depending on the different parameter values. And then we can go ahead and run. And it basically shows different uh, it basically shows different um, population growth depending on the different parameter value. And you can go to the table and then see the results. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, to go over some key concepts, we went over how modeling process works in a basic gist. So first you want to think about the components in the system we think about. And then we want to see how they're connected and how they change over time depend on each other's influence on another. And then we want to make a mathematical equations and like a pictorial representation of it. And then we want to run the model and analyze the model and, and analyze the simulation. So then uh, we went over making a population growth model with some assumptions. And in the process, we learned about the basic building blocks such as state, uh, flow, terms, sliders, graph, and we use them. We use all of them to visualize the model and how to run the model we created. Now, in the next tutorial, we're gonna go go ahead and build another model called logistic growth model or density dependent growth model, and learn about how to create a model in a discrete and continuous time step. So, hope you like this video, and I'll see you next time.